This is a smart for two pure. <laughs> it's gonna be a mechanics tour. So the engine's in the back, as you saw, in order to get this open. Uh, most models will have a button up under here and you push a button. This one does not have a button anywhere. It's just plastic. So you have to get the key and pop it with the key. Once you do that, if you look here, you've got a release tab here on one side and then you have another one on the other side. So you pull that back. It should release that one too. You can hear the motor run for it. But this is where your engine is. You can see the alternator here. This is where you fill the oil. This is where you check the oil. That's your dipstick right there, usually indicated in yellow. This is your fuel injector line. Here's where the fuel pump fuel comes in across the top of the intake manifold and then goes to your fuel rail. And then you got your injectors underneath. It looks like this is a three cylinder one liter. This is your throttle body. Uh, when you hit the gas pedal or accelerator pedal, uh, that's the servo motor that opens and closes the butterfly. This is your air filter box. You see the tab here and here, and then these screws uh, to get into that. And then you've got your baffles to make it quiet. And what else is of interest? This is your valve cover. You've got three ignition coils here, and below those are your spark plugs that all of this is in. A little tricky to get into. I want to say that's your purge control valve. Uh, the vacuum line that we saw earlier that goes to your brakes uh, comes off of this right here. That's the top of your rear shock right there. This is the top of your right shock. Uh, this is the side motor mount. These are the three bolts that you have to pull in order to get your motor to drop down to service the air conditioning or anything else. And then here's the view of the alternator through here. Here's your uh, bolt for your top of your shock. No, they're just shock absorbers. Shock and spring, just real old school. And then this is an air pump. You got just two wires to turn it on. It's Bosch, it looks, and squawks, and it's got this uh, dampening vibration. It looks just like the one in a Chevy Cobalt. You got a hose that comes across back here to that into the exhaust. That's a tour of the smart car uh, for your trunk area. So you've got this uh, arc hoop. It is your lower control arm. You can see the springs mount right to it. This is your oil filter. It's your oil drain plug, lowest point on the engine. You'll notice how crooked the engine is to fit it in here. It's kind of like a shoe or a boot, and that's the toe of it right there. Uh, going up here, that is the AC compressor, and you can see it's got a separate belt. It's a stretchy belt. We just replaced those. Uh, Looking here, this is your belt tensioner, and it's got like a 12 millimeter Torx that you use to get into it. You can see that right there. Beyond that, it's a water pump up there. Uh, that's your harmonic balancer. On this car, if you want to service anything, the best thing to do is undo this mortar mount right here. You can see three bolts right there. Uh, from the top side, you pull those bolts out while you support the engine. And then pull out your torque mount here. Uh, just replace that. And then all of this is more accessible. It lowers it down significantly to where the AC compressor can fit between the body and uh, this suspension member here. This is your shift motor. This works like a manual transmission, uh, but this does the shifting for you. This is your CV axle. This is a rear wheel drive car, and you can see there's a wheel cylinder, so it's got drum brakes in the rear. Uh, brake drums. Uh, you got a Torx bolt that holds that on so it doesn't fall on somebody's head at the factory. And then here's your filler neck stuff. There's your fuel cap right there. So the gas tank is down here. This is your fuel tank. It's the whole middle side of the car with the exception of your EVAP canister. This is your brake master cylinder. That's your power brake booster and it does have vacuum. Uh, it's a vacuum booster and the vacuum has to travel all the way from there all the way up over the top to your intake manifold. This is your anti-lock brake unit. 
You can see it's got analog brakes. These are your air conditioning lines that go up to your AC compressor. You may ask about heater hose, but heater hose actually travels through the cab. It goes up to there. Uh, that's your radiator hose. Also radiator hoses go up through the cab. Uh, that's your condenser and your lines there. If we look through this hole, right here you can see that is your expansion valve that's your expansion valve we just put a new one in in order to do that you got to pull these two bolts and they're uh, e19 technically uh, e20 will work or a 14 six point works best on those so you pull those out and drop it down and then you can reach your arm up into here and get to all the other stuff that's your steering input there's your rack and pinion uh, steering has to go around between the radiator fan and the radiator hose. And what else is interesting? Here's your ABS sensor. It's covered in plastic normally. Uh, if you want to pull these covers off, you have to pull uh, these two screws. There's a screw that goes into that yellow tab and this one. And there's another one here and here. You have to pull the back one first because the front one has these hidden screws. There's one here and one here. Uh, you'll find a lot of broken covers because people don't unbuckle them properly. So here is where the hidden screws are, is up in here. Here's where they interface. You see these little slots? There's one there, and then there's another one here. They interface with these, and see how they're at an angle? So you have to drop that one down and have it pointed at the ground before you can get the rest of it out. And this is your hood, or de facto hood. In order to get your hood open, you have to pull in on this with one finger, get your other finger behind it, and then rotate it, and then push this way. See how there's a pivot after the fact? It has to have both of those happen. There's one on this side, and there's another one on this side. And then from there, you can pull off the rest. So you can see your windshield washer fluid. I'm gonna bring the car down off the lift and then we'll show you under the hood. So underneath what you would normally have be the hood, because the engine's in the back, there's not access to a lot of anything up here except for three fluids, your two headlight assemblies with turn signals and whatnot, and then also your wiper motor and your wiper transmission. You see these bars going across, that's wiper transmission. This is your brake fluid. Even though your master cylinder is all the way over here, this is just a remote reservoir. And of course it's not dot three, it's dot four, which is a little bit different. Dot four fluid, it's more important to change regularly because it is, I believe it's hygroscopic, meaning that it can absorb moisture. And so you want to change that pretty regularly. Other than that, uh, your blower motor, all that kind of stuff, it's going to be up here because all of your HVAC stuff's up here. It's pretty tight in there. This is your washer fluid for your windshield. This is your antifreeze coolant tank. And you can see that this is your radiator right here. So it's just right over the top of it. So you don't have a conventional radiator cap. You only fill it in one place here, and that's right here. The marks for it right there, your max and min. And then uh, this, you just fill it up as full as you can. Your max and min for this, see, there you go, max and min. That's your high side AC port. You'll want to get to that through here. And then the low side AC port, um, it's a little bit easier to just go through the uh, hole and access hole there. If you're wondering where the uh, for AC, they are through here. See, there's your high side is the higher one, and then the low side's down below it. So that's them right there. The sticker for the H134A should be under here. It's not. The sticker is in here and it's 0.45 kilograms. So they always put the label for emissions and stuff like that and air conditioning up here, but it's worthless here because you have to fill it up on the other end of the car. This is the capacity. You've got this cover here and it's got tabs on the back end of it. And then there's supposed to be a screw here. This one's been lost at the lube shop. The whole cover uh, went missing. You have to do a wheelie with this thing to get it to get underneath those tabs, move it up and down a little bit. 
and then there's a, a wing nut screw that goes here that you screw in and then you've got this rubber foam and it's an open cell foam so it's good for sound insulation but it's not good for moisture there is no spare tire on this there's a compressor and if you want to get to the compressor it's underneath the passenger floorboard so you would pull this back pull the carpet back that's your uh, tow thing to go in the front if you ever need to tow your car so this is your flat tire fix right here then here is your battery on your smart car fuses on this are underneath the driver's side so fuse 14 would be that one it's a 15 amp a blue one there's what that blown fuse looks like it's got a hunk missing right there uh, one more thing that i'll say is the bolts on this are 14 millimeter and there's no spare tire jack or any of that stuff oh there is one thing i forgot you have a compartment right here where you could potentially put a scissor jack and a lug nut wrench so it's just this little latch right there so this doesn't open it this is what opens it it's got a cute little sound to it doesn't it really cute fun little car it's no joke to work on sometimes, but uh, pretty fun. This one's having a clear coat issue. Do you have a smart car? Do you have clear coat issues? Is it peeling off like this one is? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to click like. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this or videos on how to change the AC compressor or the expansion valve, I have videos on those too. Uh, be sure to check that out. Bonus footage at the end. Thank mm -hmm. you.